Welcome pre-cal students to class today on this marvelous Monday the 12th. Hope you guys are doing well today. Hope you're ready to do a lot of work today like always. Hope you had a nice weekend. Hope you got a little rest and now we're going to jump right into this. Today we're going to go over two quizzes, one test, and work on a small homework assignment. Tomorrow, more homework. So no notes for a couple of days. That'll, that'll be a nice break for you guys. Wednesday we're going to have a quiz and notes. Thursday homework, Friday notes, okay? You will have a test next Friday. Test next Friday. Nothing to turn in. There was no homework given to you on Friday. Incomplete. I don't think there's anything at all for you guys. Hold on a second here. Yes, nothing. So no incompletes. Now today, we're going to go over two quizzes. Quizzes one and five. Then we're going to go over a test, and then we're going to work on homework. Now let me talk about how I want you guys to do your test corrections, okay? In case you forgot this. Um, you do your test corrections on a completely blank, brand new sheet of paper. Up top, you put your, you put test, one, corrections, and you put your name right here, okay? And every problem that you missed, you have to redo. Show all of your work, please, all right? Show all of your work. Now, on your test, if you miss one, like, um number, I don't know, let me look here, number uh, five, where there's five different answers, you only have to rework the one that you missed, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, do understand that, okay? But, um, so tomorrow, you're going to turn in two things, two separate sheets of paper, two different assignments. Tomorrow, you're going to turn in your test corrections, okay? Then you're also going to turn in a homework assignment that I'm going to give you here in a couple minutes. All right? Okay. Moving on. Now, the test correction video is called Pre-Cal Test Number One Corrections. I think it is, let's see, 44 minutes long. But hold on. That's every problem. All that you have to do is fast forward and watch the ones that you missed. So it's not going to take you 44 minutes, not even close to that, okay? All right, the homework that is due tomorrow is, there it is. Please copy that down. And it sounds like a large assignment, but the help video is only about 17 minutes long. Also, for numbers 37 through 48, you don't have to sketch the graphs. Now, I do sketch them on the help video, but you don't have to if you don't want to. It's up to you. The help video is called September 12th homework, 17 minutes and 15 seconds. By the way, when the help video starts to play, it says page 58. Okay? Just ignore that. That is a typo. The real page is page 580. So this is correct right here, page 580. All right. Okay. At this time, let's go over your two quizzes. Now, I want all of you to listen, listen, listen. Some of you got a 100 on quiz number five. Okay. But I still want you to watch me go over it because even though you all got 100s, there was that one problem you all changed. And I want to go over that again and make sure you understand um, that that problem was not supposed to be changed. Okay. So everyone, whether you got a 100 or not, please watch the um please watch me go over quiz number five, okay? And then we'll also go over quiz number one, the factoring quiz, okay? So here we go. Um, okay, quiz number five. Now, first of all, uh, let me quickly grab your quizzes here. Give me just literally 10 seconds. Okay, on number two, uh, one student missed number two. I try not to say names, and so that student knows who they are. Please watch what you did wrong. Okay, students, okay, so um, let's take a look here. Uh, the one person that missed number two, um, all that you did wrong was you put this. Now watch. You put a one and a one, then you put a square root of three. Now watch, think about it. If you use Pythagorean's theorem, Lake squared plus lake squared equals hypotenuse squared. One times one is one. 
1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 equals 8 squared. Take the square root of both sides, and your hypotenuse would not be square root of 3. It would be square root of 2. Okay? All right. Moving on now to number 6. Now, this is the one you all changed, which I'm not mad. It's kind of funny. Um, actually, I should, I should put that back up there. Here we go. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, but you should not have changed it. There's your one special triangle. Here's the other one here. Um, let's see. 2, 1, square root of 3, 30, 60 down here. Okay. Now, I know what you guys were thinking, and that's fine. You were saying, Mr. Earhart, the triangle here with the square root of 3 has a 3 in the denominator. There's no 3 over here. And so, he must have meant a 2. Now, hold on a second, guys. Let me ask you a question, okay? Just watch carefully. If I asked you to find the, hmm, the cosine of 60, what would you get? Let's see, hold on one second. No, I'm sorry. The tangent of 60. If I asked you to find the tangent of 60, what would you get? <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry. <coughs> oh, I think I see now. Um, I think you guys are right. This should have been a two after all. Should have. Okay, my fault. Sorry, guys. Okay, you're right. Um, cosine would have to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, very sorry. This should have been a two, or this would have been better if I would have made this a tangent, actually. You better watch this, okay, guys? Because if I would have made this a tangent, then this is okay. Because watch, the tangent of 60 is opposite. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going from, um, off I'm just going off the cuff here. Sorry, guys. If I asked you to find the tangent of 30, it would be opposite over adjacent, which would be that. Of course, if you take that and rationalize it, you'll get the square root of 3 over the square root of 9, which is 3, which is this. So, you guys were right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Yes, you should have made this a 2. And that's fine. But, if your reason that this should have been a 2 was because the 2 is a hypotenuse, then your reason was awesome. Good job. Way to help out your old math teacher. However, if your reason was because you saw a 3 and no other 3, that's not correct, okay? Because tangent of, of x, tangent of 30 is this, which is this. So be careful, okay? But anyways, you guys were right, and so congratulations. All right, moving on to, to quiz number 1, the factoring quiz, okay? All right, let's take a look. These are the ones that people missed. People missed 2, 4, 6, 8, and 9. So would everybody, everybody, please get out your, um, get out your, um, factoring quizzes. <clears throat> and let's take a look at these, okay? First of all, let's see how many people missed number 2. Just one person. Okay, the person that missed number two did this. Now, please watch carefully what you did. You know who you are. Please watch, okay? If you missed number two, I just took one point off, okay? But here's what you did wrong. If you'll look at your work, you got to right here. Look at your work, please, for number two. You add this right here. Then you put out a 3x, which is good. That's fine. Then over here, um, you should have pulled out a 2. But remember, whenever this sign here is negative, you put a negative. If this sign here is positive, then you put a positive, okay? So yes, you're pulling out a 2, but make it a negative 2. Because 2 goes into 4, and 2 goes into 10. And look what you're left over with. Check it and see. Negative 2 times 2, negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 5, positive 10. So then your answer would be 2x minus 5, 3x minus 2. Now, you had a negative sign right here. Not quite sure where that came from, except maybe 
it looks like for some reason you had a negative 3x right here underneath the 4x plus 10. I'm not sure why, but hopefully this answers or helps you find your mistake, okay? But there would not be a negative sign here, okay? It would be positive because your 3x right here is positive. So positive 3x, okay? All right. For those that missed number four, let's see how many there were. Um, uh, one person missed number four. One person. So you know who you are. And it's kind of, I mean, kind of funny, not funny, but on number four, if you'll look at your work, please don't. Look carefully, please. The one person that missed number four. In your work, you pulled out a two like this. And that's great. And I only took one point off. Okay, I was I was reasonable. You pulled out a two in the first step like you're supposed to. But then your final answer, you just put 4x plus 1, 3x plus 2. And you forgot to bring that two down right there. So I just took one point off for that, okay? One point. Okay, number six. <clears throat> um, we have one person that missed number six. One person, okay? So oh, here we go. Let's take a look at it. Number six. Now that person put not factorable, okay? So let me show you what you did wrong, all right? Please pay attention, guys, okay? Please pay attention. All right, always pull out what's common first. I'm going to pull out a negative because my first term is negative. So I'm going to pull out a negative and a 2 because 2 goes into 2 and 2 goes into 54, okay? Now, I have three x's here but no x's here. So I cannot pull out x. However, I have three y's here and three y's here so I can pull three y's out. So I'm left over with x cubed. Let's see, let's see if that's right. Negative times the positive is negative. 2y cubed times x cubed is 2x cubed y cubed. So we're fine. Now here, we have negative 27 because negative, no positive. Negative times the positive is negative. 2 times 27 is 54. So that's good. And now look at this. Perfect cube, perfect cube. So... Bring down your negative 2y cubed, put a little parenthesis, put a big parenthesis. The cube root of x squared is x. The cube root of 27 is 3. Bring down your plus sign. Multiply this times itself. Multiply this times itself. Multiply these two together. Remember, the first term and the last term are always um positive and this middle term is always the opposite of this always so if this is positive this is negative and there we go all right whenever you factor perfect cubes or perfect squares you can never factor this trinomial it will never be factorable okay all right moving on to number eight number eight <clears throat> two people missed number eight and they both did the same thing. Okay, look guys, number eight was a trick question. Okay, you guys tried to factor this. Remember, this is a perfect square and a perfect square, okay? Whenever you're factoring perfect squares, the first term must be positive and the second term must be negative. You cannot factor perfect squares when both terms are positive. Cannot do it. Okay, cannot do it. Now, for perfect cubes, that's not the case, okay? For perfect cubes, they can both be positive. They can both be negative. Or one can be positive and one can be negative. Okay, if they were both negative, you would just factor out a negative one and put this. Okay, but listen to me when it comes to perfect squares, factoring perfect squares, this first term must be positive and this second term must be negative. Got it? Must be. Okay, so number eight was not factorable. All right, now number nine, we had. 
three people missed number nine, okay? Now, one person, I might go ahead and mention names on this one, okay? Okay, Harrison, on yours, number nine, you had the correct answer. Look at your worksheet. Look at your notebook worksheet. On your notebook worksheet, you had this. X minus 2, X plus 5, X squared minus 5X plus 25, okay? But on your answer sheet, you forgot to put this. Now, Mr. Earhart, you're being kind of strict. Well, guys, look, sometimes a student might not know which answer is correct, so they'll leave one on one paper, not that Harrison would do this, and then one on the, on the quiz answer. So I always go uh, by whatever you put on your quiz sheet, okay? And notice, Harrison, I just took one point off, okay? Now, Jacob, for you, you had this, x minus 2 for your answer, and then you had x cubed plus 125, right? Well, this can be taken further. This is a perfect cube. This is a perfect cube. So you could have put a little parentheses, a big parentheses, cube root, cube root, x squared, 25, 5x, negative, positive, and bring this down. Okay? So you should have factored this further. And then Henry, let's see what you did here. Um, it's kind of funny what all you guys were so close. Now look what you had, Henry. You have this. Look at your worksheet. X cubed, X negative two in parentheses. And you pulled out a 125 with X minus two. Henry, dude, look at this. You have matching parentheses. Right, you're matching parentheses once. And the other parentheses would be this. And then you have a perfect cube, like I just showed um, Jacob a second ago. You have a perfect cube and a perfect cube. You can factor that further, okay? So you did great. You um, pulled out what was common in the first two, pulled out what was common in the second two, but the reason you did that was to see if this parentheses and this parentheses matched, and they did. So you write your matching parentheses once, like this, and then put this here, this here, and then factor that further, okay? All right, my voice is about gone, so um, guys, you do not turn in quiz corrections, okay? You do not. Um, so I just want to go over those. If you have any questions still on those quizzes, let me know, okay? Now, real quick here. <clears throat> I want to go over the statistics so you can check my work, okay? For the factoring quiz, each mistake was six points off, okay? Each mistake was six points off. Highest grade in the class was Ian with the 100. Congratulations to him. <clears throat> On the quiz number five, um, there were, there were well, you know what? Everyone had an A. I'm just going to say that, okay? There were uh, three 100s and a 95. Everyone had an A. The first mistake was five points off. Every mistake thereafter was 10 points off, okay? And my voice is shot, so let's get this going and get done, okay? Um, that's all for today. Please get to work on your two assignments, which are test corrections and the book assignment, okay? Have a great day. Contact me if you have any questions at all.